What is up? Welcome to the pod. So when I started my business just about 12 years ago now, I noticed that I started using my phone a lot more, which on some level makes sense because of an increased demand for things like email, social media, scheduling, etc. However, phone use in general has just ramped up a ton over the last decade or so for just about everyone. Personally, it got to a point for me where it was diminishing my ability to pay attention for periods of time, absolutely crushing my productivity, and just reducing my quality of life. So I took a step back and looked at how I could develop a better relationship with my phone, and so I've made some modifications over the years, and I'm going to share them with you right now. Now, I want to be clear, I am not one of those people that thinks that phones are evil and social media is toxic. In my eyes, it's all about the user. For example, alcohol in and of itself isn't bad. However, if someone abuses it, just like I have in the past, and becomes an alcoholic, that is clearly a problem. However, most folks aren't alcoholics, meaning The onus is on the individual. Phone use is actually a lot like dietary choices in the sense that everyone has different priorities, goals, preferences, needs, wants. And so I'm going to share with you what works for me right now. And so as I'm outlining how I choose to use my phone, feel free to implement something or not, or Just give something a shot like you'd try on a shirt to see how it fits. You can always take it off after. Also, if you know that right away something just isn't going to work for you practically speaking, skip it. On the other hand, if something really intrigues you and you think that it may benefit your life as a whole, give it a go. No pressure. I also mention that because I fully understand that I choose to use my phone in a very uncommon way, as you'll notice when I go through the modifications that I've personally made. And so you don't have to go to the lengths that I have. And to be honest, most people almost certainly won't. However, there may be a few changes that work really well for you. So I came up with 10 specific modifications that have worked really well for me. So let's dig into them. The first one is, I keep my phone on silent 24-7, and it does not vibrate either. And I do this to protect my attention span, but also just because I cannot stand the beeping and buzzing and this and that. It drives me nuts. Now, it does mean that I miss some phone calls and don't always get back to text immediately. However, that trade-off is 100% worth it to me. So this allows me to keep my attention span intact, be way more productive, and a whole lot more present in my day-to-day life and relationships. Also, it's worth mentioning that you don't have to go from 0 to 100 via keeping your phone on silent all the time like I do. Maybe you just have specific hours that your ringer is on and other hours when it's not. You can jig this up however you'd like. I also put my phone on airplane mode every night, and I originally implemented this because I often check the time when I wake up to pee, and when I did in the past, I was seeing messages that had come through from friends or fam, which I would feel tempted to check, and if I didn't check them, the wheels in my head would often start turning about what they may have reached out about. So... I now put my phone on airplane mode, and instead of receiving messages and calls throughout the night, I get them in the morning when I take my phone off of airplane mode. Now, there was a minor adjustment phase where I thought that the world might end if I'm not reachable because I'm just so important. However, I got over that quickly because the earth continued to revolve around the sun, and this is just what I do now. Also, as a result, I sleep much better. Another change that I made was I turned off all of my social media, email, and app notifications. Because before, I was being notified every single time I received an email, a like, 
a private message, a mention, a tag. It was outrageous because I was choosing to be constantly interrupted. And so this was absolutely huge for, again, my productivity and attention span. The only notifications that pop up on my phone now are silenced phone calls and silenced text messages. That's it. No news, no sports stuff, no apps in the background, nothing. Also, I have group text message notifications completely turned off because I have a fantasy football group and a boys group that absolutely pop off sometimes. And so those notifications are off entirely as well. Now, the kicker is that at first, when I implemented this, I noticed that because I had turned off virtually all of my notifications, that I started checking social media and email a lot more often to see what was going on. And that led me to make another change, which was, I now allow myself to check email and social media a maximum of three times per day, and I track it. I have a little tally in my handwritten Moleskine scheduler to keep count. And because of this, I no longer mindlessly check social media or anything like it. Every time I open up my email, Instagram, or whatever, it is intentional, meaning I do it with a purpose in mind. Something else that I've implemented is when I do check social media, no more than three times per day, I essentially have a post and ghost approach in the sense that I post, check my personal messages, and I log off. And so I do not scroll the feed. And if you're struggling to make time to cook, go for walks, sleep more, etc., I would highly recommend scaling back your scrolling and you'll likely be amazed at just how much time that frees up. Something I've noticed is that a lot of folks with Mac computers and iPhones have their text messages come through on their laptops. And I personally don't do this just because it would destroy my productivity and attention span. And so my computer and phone are not linked that way and it's been super helpful for me. I also implemented a little rule for myself that I always keep my phone face down, whether I'm at home solo, out with someone at a restaurant, or whatever. It's just a habit that I've gotten into, and even though my phone is always on silent, I just don't want the visual stimulation of a message or phone call coming through interrupting the experience that I'm having even if it's just watching Netflix, because when I'm watching a show, I want to be watching a show. Next up is what I call the auto grab, because I noticed that when I was out and about at a restaurant with someone and they got up to go to the bathroom, or if I was waiting in a lineup, that I would immediately reach for my phone to fill that gap. And I wanted to stop doing that because I thought to myself, I'm rarely having any quote-unquote empty or open moments anymore where I'm just being. For example, sitting at a table in a cafe, bar, or restaurant and just sitting instead of filling that moment with my phone. Nowadays, I like to actively leave my phone alone and just people watch, think, strike up a combo with someone, or even be slightly bored, heaven forbid and ultimately use that opportunity to just be for a few minutes. It's quite nice. I have a super old phone plan that I've been using for years that only has three gigabytes of monthly data on it. And I've chosen not to update it because I don't want to be tempted to use my phone more than I already do. Also, when I'm out of the country traveling, which is a lot, as you know, I've yet to get data ever. And so I limit myself to exclusively Wi-Fi. And again, I do this to set myself up for success or what I deem as success in terms of maximizing my real life experience instead of my virtual experience. Now, when I'm abroad and I can access Wi-Fi, cool, I may use it. However, this added effort barrier simply has me on my phone less, and I like that. 
Also, if I'm in a new city that I've never been before and I need to navigate, I load up Google Maps before I leave my apartment and I navigate no problem. Okay, now I want to address the most important aspect in terms of all of this stuff, which is the how around implementation. Because we're so attached to our phones that it can be difficult to stay aware enough to actually make some of these changes if you'd like to. The notification stuff is easy because you can just go into your settings and change them right now. But what about things like mindless scrolling, reflexive grabbing for your phone, and things like that? The key is pattern interruption. For example, one thing that you can do is start putting your phone in a different pocket. And so let's say that it's typically in your right pocket and you begin putting it in your left or back pocket. And for the ladies, maybe a different part of your purse. When you grab for it automatically, and it happens to be in a different spot, this will interrupt your typical pattern and remind you of how you may not want to check it. Another example, if you usually place your phone right next to you at home, put it in a place where you actually have to get up to get it. And when you mindlessly reach for it, it won't be there and you can provide yourself with the opportunity to do something else. If you usually place your phone on the table at a restaurant or cafe face up, try putting it face down or in your pocket on silent sans vibration and you can soak up more of that experience. If there is an app or game or whatever that you find yourself using more than you'd like to, you can delete the app from your phone so that if you want to use it, there is the effort barrier of re-downloading it again beforehand. This is also really helpful for things like Skip the Dishes or Uber Eats if you'd like to order in less often because it creates an effort barrier via needing to download the app and that time that it takes to download the app also may provide you with just enough of a gap to consider whether you really want that food or not. Another cool tool that you can use to your advantage on the iPhone specifically is go to your settings and then scroll down a little bit to screen time. And there are all sorts of helpful little ways that you can set up your phone in a way that fits you. You can set daily app limits. So for example, if you don't want to use Instagram for more than X amount of time per day, you can organize that in there. You can also just see how much time you're investing on your phone period in total. And for a lot of folks, it's going to be a pretty sobering number. Now, like I mentioned at the outset, I am not saying that the way that I interact with my phone is the right way. It's just what works for me. And so feel free to implement none, one, two, or all 10 of the adjustments that I talked about, and you can figure out what works best for you. If you're interested in applying for one-on-one -on -one nutritional coaching and or workout design with me, you can click the link in the description below or head on over to n1fitness.com forward slash coaching. If you're finding this info helpful and you'd like to, Feel free to leave the pod a review on your favorite podcast platform. And you can follow me on Instagram at N1 Fitness, on TikTok at The N1 Fitness, and on YouTube at Marcus Adu slash N1 Fitness. Lastly, if you'd like to stay up to date on the newest episode releases, you can hit the subscribe button. Thanks for tuning in. I hope that you found this episode useful, and I will catch you on the next one. See ya! See ya!